everyone, welcome to my new show here on Brian's Things That Are Cool, Those Thrilling Days of Yesteryear, where we'll be taking a look at vintage heroes from TV and film. I figured we'd start off with one of my favorite shows, The Adventures of Superman, starring George Rees, Phyllis Coates, later Noel Neal, Jack Larson, and John Hamilton. But first, a little bit of history, and then we'll get into a top ten of my favorite episodes. The Adventures of Superman ran for 104 episodes. The first season was shot in 1951, but didn't air until 1952 when it was picked up by Kellogg's Serial. The show aired from September 19, 1952 to April 28, 1958. The first two seasons were filmed in black and white, with George Reeves wearing a tan and brown costume which appeared better on black and white film, while the remainder of the series was filmed in color. However, audiences didn't see it in color until it was put into syndication in 1965. The show features some interesting guest stars as well, including Dolores Fuller, the girlfriend of famed B-movie director Ed Wood, Robert Lowry, who was the silver screen's second Batman, who also appeared with George in a training film during World War II about the dangers of syphilis, Rifleman star Chuck Connors, and pinup girl Joey Lansing. Well, let's take a look at my top 10 favorite episodes of The Adventures of Superman. Number 10, Superman on Earth. In Superman on Earth, Jor-El, Krypton's leading scientist, decides to send his infant son Kal-El to Earth, as Krypton's days are growing short. The rocket is found by Eben and Sarah Kent, who are known as Jonathan and Martha in the comics. Young Kal-El is renamed Clark and raised by the Kents in Smallville. After Evan's death, an adult Clark moves to Metropolis to become a reporter. Knowing her son has certain powers far beyond those of mortal men, Sarah Kent gives Clark a costume to wear so that he may help those in need. Clark's alter ego Superman makes his first appearance saving a man falling from a blimp. We've heard Superman's origin story many times in film and television, but this is my favorite telling. The Golden Age sci-fi comic feel gives it that great Flash Gordon feel. Speaking of Flash Gordon, some of the 1938 movie serial's costumes are used here to dress the Kryptonian scientists. Except for one who obviously shops at the same place as Captain Marvel. Number 9. Jimmy the Kid from 1956. In Jimmy the Kid, gangsters break into Clark's office searching for important papers, but turn up nothing. The boss comes up with a new plan. Kid Collins, a violent thug who just so happens to look exactly like cub reporter Jimmy Olsen. The real Jimmy is kidnapped and replaced with Kid, who attempts to get Clark to reveal where those documents are. I first saw this episode on Nick at Night in the early 90s. Nick at Night, those TV classics, Nick at Night, no fatty acids, powerful TV, but you can count on Nick at Night. Jack Larson does really well in this episode, playing two roles. His usual innocent character of Jimmy, of course, is always likable. And as Kid Collins, he's successfully menacing. It must have been a blast to play something so different. Number 8. No Holds Barred from 1952. In No Holds Barred, wrestler Bad Luck Brannigan, working for a crooked promoter, uses a move called the Paralyzer to cripple his opponents. Clark discovers that the promoter has kidnapped an immigrant named the Swami, who has extensive knowledge of the body's pressure points, and has been teaching Bad Luck Brannigan certain techniques to win matches. Superman asks the Swami to teach him as well, and he then teaches a college wrestler who has challenged Brannigan. The premise lends itself to strong action throughout, ending in a climatic fight between Superman and the bad guys. They don't stand a chance. Number 7. Great Caesar's Ghost from 1955. Any fan of the adventures of Superman knows that the favorite catchphrase of Daily Planet editor-in-chief Perry White is Great Caesar's Ghost. Well, imagine Perry's shock when he's confronted with the ghost of Julius Caesar. Before long, all of Metropolis is questioning the chief's sanity. How does Perry's fragile state of mind benefit a gang of criminals? Is this really Caesar? Looks like it's up to Superman to catch this ghost. This was another episode I remember from Nick at Night. As the show reached its color years, its plots became a bit more kid-friendly and out there. But this is still keeping with the mystery feel of the earlier black and white episodes. 
Plus, nothing's better than hearing John Hamilton yelling, Great Caesar's ghost! Number six. The Mine Machine from 1952. In The Mine Machine, a gangster kidnaps a scientist and takes possession of his invention. The gangster uses the device to damage the minds of people testifying for an investigative committee. The victims die a short time later. Superman has to find out who's responsible before Lois is set to testify. This is an excellent example of a first season episode. The first season was more adult than the rest of the series, with plot elements such as murder giving the episodes a film noir feel. The change of tone for the series is no doubt due to the government investigation on juvenile delinquency, which at the time was blamed on comic books. Number 5. Stamp Day for Superman from 1954. In Stamp Day for Superman, Clark and Lois are out for a walk and stumble upon a jewelry store robbery. As Superman confronts one of the two robbers, not lucky enough to escape with his partner, Lois gets a good look at the man that got away. As Clark pays a visit to Jimmy's alma mater to discuss the U.S. Treasury Department's savings stamp program, Lois is kidnapped by the escaped criminal, Blinky. Now it's up to Superman to save the day and still be back in time to teach kids about saving stamps. As you may guess while watching this episode, this is not a normal episode, but a government film made to promote the U.S. Treasury Department's savings stamp program. Numerous lines of dialogue are sprinkled throughout to remind you of this fact. It was all like a dream until that alarm went off and woke me up. Well, I realized that I can, I can run from the police, but I can't run for myself. It's easy to see that you're new at this sort of thing. Why did you do it? Why? That's what I keep asking myself. Sure, it was the money, but it went deeper than that. I should have learned how to save and handle money a long time ago. Then this wouldn't have happened. Well, I'm sorry it did, but at least you've learned something very important. But it still delivers a fun story. Due to its nature as a government film, Stamp Day for Superman is in the public domain. Stamp Day for Superman is a very special episode for me because it's the very first episode I ever saw. Back in about 1989, my parents took me to the mall one day and bought me this VHS. I think there's a Fleischer cartoon on here as well. And I loved what I saw. And about a year later, Nick at Night started showing it every night, and I was hooked. Number four. Mystery and Wax from 1953. In Mystery and Wax, Madame Dawn and her husband Andrew own a wax museum in Metropolis, where she claims that her wax sculptures come to her as visions of people who will die in six months by suicide. Her latest figure? Perry White. Originally, Jimmy Olsen was to be the figure Madame Dawn creates, but due to budget constraints, this was one of two episodes that Jack Larson does not appear in. I guess Jimmy is on assignment this week. I don't know. I love creepy wax museum stories, and my favorite episodes of this show are the mystery episodes, allowing Clark to use his detective skills to crack the case. And Madame Dawn is a delightfully over-the-top villain. Because I've got courage, money, power. Everyone fears me. Number three, the stolen costume from 1952. In the stolen costume, a criminal breaks into Clark's apartment, finds a hidden closet, and steals Clark's super suit. The criminal is mortally wounded, but manages to take the costume to his partner, Ace, and his girlfriend, Connie, leaving Clark desperate to find the costume. It's interesting to note that the only series regular that appears in this episode is Clark himself, and Superman, of course. It also shows the great lengths Clark will go to to protect his identity, when the crooks are left on a mountaintop. Oh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Maybe not. Number two. The Town That Wasn't, from 1957. In The Town That Wasn't, a group of criminals have constructed a small mobile town which they use to grift money from passing motorists, and for bigger game, hijacking trucks carrying valuable goods. When Lois is hot on the trail, she gets captured, and it's up to Clark, Jimmy, and Inspector Henderson to round these criminals up and save Lois. This is another episode from the color seasons I feel is as strong as the black and white episodes. The criminals have a creative, if impractical, scam 
and it's always nice to see Inspector Henderson show up. Robert Shane took a career hit when he came under House Un-American Activity scrutiny over unproven accusations by his ex-wife of communism. George Reeves himself stood up for him, and Robert Shane went on to a long career right up to the early 90s when he had a role as a newsstand operator on the 1990 Flash TV series. And my number one favorite episode of The Adventures of Superman is... Superman and the Mole Men, from 1951. When underground beings known as the Mole Men explore the surface world, it sends the town into a panic, and only Superman can help them. This was the first feature film about Superman, who had previously been the star of two serials starring Kirk Allen and Noel Neal, who would replace Phyllis Coates as Lois on the TV series when the show took a year to pick up and Phyllis was forced to find other work. The film was shot in 12 days, starting on July 10th, 1951, at RKO Path Studios. Two of the Mole Men were munchkins in The Wizard of Oz, Jerry Marin and Billy Curtis, who would go on to appear in a later episode of The Adventures of Superman as an alien named Mr. Zero. A year after the picture's release, Superman and the Mole Men was split into two parts as the episode The Unknown People. The monster films of the 1950s often dealt with themes of tolerance, in which we find out that the true monster is man, which perhaps is a cliched theme, but definitely works well in Superman and the Mole Men. George would play Superman one more time on an episode of I Love Lucy. Sadly, on June 15, 1959, George died in his Benedict Canyon home of a gunshot wound to the head, leaving behind much speculation as to whether it was suicide or murder. The series was still extremely popular, leading to some rather bizarre ideas, including a spin-off that would have featured Jack Larson as Jimmy Olsen in his own show, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. The very idea disgusted Jack Larson, and it was never greenlit. Then there was Super Pup, which did make it to pilot, so we have this now. And lastly, there was another spin-off, which made it to pilot, The Adventures of Superboy, featuring John Rockwell as the teenage superhero. Unfortunately, The Adventures of Superboy never got picked up, despite the fact that there was already 12 episodes already written and ready to go. Oh, it could have been. Well, thank you for joining me here on those thrilling days of yesteryear. If you want to be kept up to date as to when I release a new video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I'm Brian. Thank you and good night.